This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Privacy. Go to privacy.com forward slash rogue and get $5 to spend wherever you want. You know, you might want to go to scamstuff.com. I'm just saying. You should probably do that. Dang it, Jason, I'm tired of having my watches stolen right off my wrist. What are you talking about? That's I mean, not I, a thing. I, I, I can't go 30 feet without all of a sudden I look down and the watch has vanished. I have to buy another watch. I bought 17 watches in the last three weeks. That is movie fantasy nope. and you have some sort of weird issue where, are you hiding them places? What's no, going no on? I'm wearing them on my wrist and suddenly they, the pickpockets are everywhere and we have to defend ourselves to stop them from stealing up all of our watches. We have to learn their techniques so that the average consumer cannot fall for them. That okay with you, YouTube? Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Canada, after 10 years of us going back and forth, we finally got James Harrison, pickpocket extraordinaire, and somebody who just performed at the Rogues Village in DEF CON. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but apparently there was more people there at my show than yours. All right, but, uh, uh, cut, that's the end of the episode. <laughs> I used to think that this was something you only saw in movies until I saw you do it last night. It was a total blast. We went to the Moon Tower Saloon where we shoot a ton of Scam School, Scam Nation episodes and it was so fun to just point and say, do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we thought we'd try something out here. Um, just something silly with my ring. Uh, Lane, do you mind double checking that for me? Uh, it doesn't bend or open or do anything silly. Just a normal, a normal ring? normal ring to me. Fair enough, because in a moment I'm going to frustrate you and I don't want you to blame the ring, I want you to blame me. So if I take my ring, throw it back on. Yeah, it gets really weird. Do you have one that comes off? I uh, do. Pop it off if you don't mind for just a second. Sure. Awesome. You seemed a little hesitant. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll put mine in the pocket. Okay. And uh, we won't put yours in the pocket. That's okay, good. we'll take your ring. If I give it a squeeze, now it's my ring. <laughs> do you know where yours went? I... Not in the pocket, because I told you I would never put it there. <laughs> Wait, why don't you come over and give me a hand real quick? Come on up. You get to be my Vanna. Okay. <laughs> now, I can make a jump back and forth in my hands. Can you hold your hands open for me for one second? Excellent. I'm going to put my ring here, your ring there. Okay. I'm going to ask you to squeeze my ring as tight as you can. Excellent. Turn your hand over. Hold tight, because it might disappear from your hand. Okay. okay. Squeeze this hand as well. And do you know this lady well enough she can hold your hand without it being awkward? Sure. <laughs> Could you do that? <laughs> Excellent. We're going to try and get my... <laughs> now you made it off. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. We're going to get this ring to join that one there. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Did you feel it go? No. Drop my ring. Open that one up. I said I'd get it there. I did not say how. <laughs> not all of these are good tricks. Some okay. of these are bad that jokes. You can joke. put your ring on for one second, but one. I'm going to borrow my ring. Because if I take my ring, I may jump around. Did you feel it go... Uh, Oh, sorry, that's that, that's your phone there. I don't want to play with your phone there. Yeah. That's stuck in there good. Yeah. It's uh, not, but it's but not. here's the funny thing. Um, did you feel me take that? <laughs> I did not. No? no. Uh, if you didn't feel that, you probably didn't feel this either. No, I didn't. Uh, thank you for not hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> So what really struck me is how important having a process, having a magic trick, the fact that you were pretending to be doing one thing but actually grabbing the wristwatch was because it bought you an inordinate amount of time holding their wrist. I mean, I knew you were doing it. Like after a minute that I'm like, he's had his hand on that wrist for a long time. You don't have to be fast. You just gotta be smooth. And if I can instruct you on something, that means that you're gonna be nice and let me do what I need to do under the pretense of helping me out. Is that the most important fundamental, the fact that you need permission to be touching somebody for a long time? Oh, of course. If I just pump, come up and, and grab you, there is no way that you're gonna let me stay there longer than the fact that I touched you. Which is more important, manual dexterity or verbal dexterity? Ooh, that's good. For myself, I find verbal dexterity works way better because if I can distract you with my mouth, then I can take way more time with my hands to take things. Yeah, I guess I guess the whole verbal dexterity thing is just don't arouse suspicion. It's only when they become suspicious that you run into trouble. Like if I, I assume that if I'm holding your wrist doing a thing and I'm like, yeah, and um, uh, also, uh, you know, if, if I don't have that, then people yeah. are like, what is happening here? And then they kind of do a self scan and we're like, he's really fidgeting on my <laughs> wrist. You have to be, dexterous enough and clever enough to create a good enough smoke screen for what you're actually wanting to do. A smoke screen is a perfect analogy because that's what I'm trying to do, whether it's with my words or actions with my body or my other hand, that allows me the time I need 
to slip a wristwatch off. Well, teach us the fundamentals. How do we, how do we start? We start with proving. Oh, what? Right. <laughs> with proving that I can do something really, really well. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what just when I know a magic trick's about to happen, and then it happens and it tricks me anyway. I love it. I love it. I love how mad he gets. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, a magic trick that is very, very old. It comes from vaudeville. Hey, it still worked. Uh, multiple, multiple fingers. Uh, hold on. I want, I want to try this. I've never okay. done this. Uh, okay. So, so you, you, you got it on the one. Yep. Uh, you appear to grab. You appear to grab. You are like pulling so. it off. That's a different finger. That's my middle finger. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then, and then I, and then I, uh, well, blip, uh, yep. look, I did it. I did magic. Oh yeah. I can do magic. Okay. Now I feel dumb. <laughs> Hate you both. So it just occurs to me that once you do, all you need to do is that one decent trick, and after that, everything else could be a fake trick. Like you could do two minutes of grab these, swap these, who's got a coin, and then oh, you could just end with like, oh, I guess it didn't work, bye. <laughs> <laughs> then you have a watch. We're gonna use your watch, Brian, because this is a leather strap watch or a belt buckle watch. Leather's the best, okay. especially if you're starting out. So I just realized that a very important part is finding a good target. You probably spend 20 minutes looking for the right wrist watch before you do the five minute performance. That kind of suspicious behavior. He's casing you, just like casing a house, like we did on Hacking the System. Yeah, exactly. What you see is just tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Everything else I'm doing is under the water. I'm casing, I'm looking for the right targets. I'm looking for people that don't have a problem with people in their personal space. Uh, don't have a problem, they seem like they, they will listen to instructions. Uh, these are the people that oftentimes make good volunteers for magic tricks. You look for people who look you in the eye when you, when you say hello to them or they're, they're clearly engaged and distracted and on a date and looking for an excuse to have something amazing happen. All of these are the same traits that will make them, I assume, a good target. Absolutely. So first thing I have to do is I have to get you to hold your hand open yep. and I'm going to make something amazing happen with my ring. Right. All I need you to do is just squeeze your hand. Okay. Perfect. This hand goes over top. My thumb goes right on the tongue mm -hmm. of the watch. Okay. Right there. And when I grab this here, my thumb is going to use friction to push that through. Like so. This seems like such a dangerous moment. It kind of is. But luckily, this is also uh, what oh, you're, I'm you also, have me doing When I'm stuff. doing this here with my motor functions, I'm asking again, distracting with instruction, mm -hmm. to open this hand, and we're gonna get into a moment of just a little bit of disconnect, because mm -hmm. you don't understand what to do. Okay. I'm gonna ask you to hold your hand up like this, right. and then I'm gonna tell you to close your hand. Okay. My thumb's in the way. Right, so I'm waiting for you to move your thumb, and so essentially you're handing me the awkward situation, like, hey man, no, no, do it. And I'm like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. All of my attention yeah. goes right here. Because you're on his side now, and you want this to work. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to fail. Yeah. Exactly, and when I ask you to squeeze that tight, okay. this is the moment that I squeeze over here. Oh, that's great. So I'm you squeeze there, and then here. there I pop the pin. The pin is now popped, ready to go, and then I turn this over like so. And again, this is all process that I assume is leading up to a magic exactly. trick, right? The thumb again does its job to push this all the way through. And you could take your time with that. All the time in the world. Okay. And then when I'm ready, I'm just gonna, this is the one thing, the one thing you'll notice when I do this, is when we're ready to, Pull the watch off your wrist, mm -hmm. I give it a little extra squeeze. Okay, so this, I, I assume that's so that uh, uh, I won't notice the difference in pressure because there's yes. always on my wrist. And it anchors in your mind, I feel my watch. Right, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna have you let go here. I reach under here just for the moment to drop the ring for my gag. Oh, there you go. I give it a squeeze, I say open your hand here. Yep. Perfect, and then I've got your watch. That was very fast. You bother to do a whole routine at this point and keep everyone's attention. Exactly. And then you get that time delay that is so important to, to magicians because you get the moments of amazement. In fact, it's probably even better if you lock that away and then do three or four other routines. And then finally, it's a guy who's been sitting down for oh, 10 yeah. minutes. And for the, sure. the use of the ring, and this is something that really uh, appeals to me, it's not an illusion, it's a trick. It really is a trick in this, and it doesn't require any skill. You're just saying, hold it here, now hold it here. Yeah. You don't have to learn something else on top of how to do all of this. So the only bummer, I guess you have to uh, practice with a friend, because you can't practice on yourself, really, right? You actually can. What? You'll yeah. go blind. It... <laughs> <laughs> with the technique that I'm showing you, this thumb here, all you're doing is you're kind of like giving yourself a handshake. Oh yeah, you're right. So you can just sit there, 
and practice it. And once you've got that part there, you just give it a little squeeze. Got it. And you're gonna use the tongue to, to push, push the, pop, the, pop, push pop the pin. pin. Yep. Now this is important, you don't want the pin to fall back into the hole. Right. So you're just gonna go on a small angle as this goes back. Oh, that's yeah. great, so it's slightly off. And then now it's pretty much done. Yeah. I give a squeeze, because even though it's still threaded through, <laughs> that yeah. moment when it comes off. pop right off. Wow. Yeah. That is shockingly easy. <laughs> and so I assume that with this type of watch, there's different variations based on where they're positioned that you do? Yeah, when I'm standing in front of you, I have to use my thumb because that's just where everything lands. Uh -huh. But if I found you on the other side of me, I would need to use my middle finger because that's my next strongest finger in my hand. Okay, what about this crazy one? He's got like a manacle on him. Well, when you're starting out, you don't use him. Okay. <laughs> There's absolutely no way I can steal this watch. I even point out what I gotta deal with here mm -hmm. and turn it over like this. And I'm gonna ask Jason, Jason, now that I've distracted you, did you notice that I might've taken your wallet? No. And then when you go to look for it, he pulls his hand right out. Oh, okay, so you, you get the proof that you can steal watches. <laughs> you explain. <laughs> oh, oh, you actually thought he had taken the... Oh. This is not my wallet! I know, this is. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching you! I really should have put this back. There's not much to take. No, no. Patreon.com slash modern rogue. <laughs> oh, that's so great! Legit got me. What? And I was watching for it. Yeah. I was trying to help. You turned me into your confederate. Yeah, man. That's oh. my job. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> Very well done, sir. Thank you. Uh, so are we gonna learn how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll save this for part two. <laughs> I wanna learn that too. <laughs> so let's I guess... come back and see part two. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Ryan, I was subscribed to World of Warcraft for like two years before I remembered, hey, I'm still subscribed to this. <laughs> It's a true story. Dude, that's the horror of putting your credit card and attaching it to anything. That's why I'm done with all that. Privacy.com has changed my life. It's a debit card. You tie it to your account like any other debit card. But the best part is, unlike credit cards, they don't sell your information. They respect your privacy. Even better, you can generate one-time burner cards and set limits so long after that card runs out of money, you don't have to worry about it. Modern Rogue hero Frank Abagnale recently said, do not use the bank issued debit card. Privacy.com is a way around that. Oh my gosh, yeah, because if that information leaks out, everybody just bleeds your account dry. But because each individual burner card is associated on one particular account, you can find out that the entire world of Warcraft got hacked and you'd be like, so, ain't yeah. none of mine, yeah. Kermit Gift. Exactly. So go to privacy.com forward slash rogue and get $5 now to spend wherever you want. Yeah, dude, at the very least, you can spend that at scamstuff.com, get some sweet tutorials that you could download instantly for freezies. Privacy.com slash rogue. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's important. It's like we planned that. On horn, but apparently there was more people there at my show than yours. Oh, but, uh, cut. It's the end of the episode. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Ixnay on the outcry. Oh, All right. sorry, sorry. Uh, it's the only thing I got. I don't have a gold button push play on YouTube. Yeah. Okay? You can take that one. We got the platinum okay, one enough. coming in the mail fair soon. Enough, fair enough.